All right, guys, before I get into this video, I just wanted to say a special thank you to Les Pepler with Tesla Transport out of Detroit, Michigan. This is my first 589 short hood day cab coming out. And I, I actually have a long hood 589 sitting back behind there because I just want to do a quick comparison video. But I um, want to talk a little bit about Les because he has just been so trusting and gracious to allow me to help him build a truck for him. And I wanted to shoot a special shout out to Craig. Craig is his brother. He's um, since passed since we started this project. Les and his brother were extremely close and he was so excited to bring this truck in and show his brother. Um, I'm gonna have Joe with Speedway Graphics. Uh, Les is gonna have him do some uh, pinstriping and some little things to honor his brother Craig. So, hey, rest in peace, Craig. And you know, I hope you're watching from above and you're proud of your brother. He's, he's just a great person to work with. I really, really enjoy you, Les. So, all right, so real fast, as you can see, back in the back, you can just kind of see how the nose pokes out on the long hood versus the short hood. It's kind of hard to line them up and give a good camera perspective on that, but we built Les's truck to be very short. We needed it to make very, very tight turns he delivers MRI machines. So he was a Tesla transport before Tesla cars were ever being built. So in case people are wondering about that, there's no affiliation with Tesla there, but Les is the original OG. So, okay, real quick on these trucks. I have a TikTok video too that if you watch that, it might have some more, I try to remember the same details for each one, but the fastest way to tell the difference between a short hood and a long hood is that break in the fender right there. So these are still aluminum bicycle fenders, okay? And then you can see here, 15 inch air breathers. The air breathers are shifted forward to allow for space for the mirror brackets. Also now you don't have to move, take the mirror brackets off to get your air breathers out, okay? Another thing too is a lot of people are asking about is horn configurations. As it stands right now, guys, I actually have some build slots available in late April, early May, as of today. Of course, it changes day to day. And you can see here, it's not the diamond cut anymore, it's the classical cut. We did the aluminum polished bumper. I think you might put a new bumper on it at some point in time. Oh, so for all you Kenworth guys, I know that you're waiting for the day where, you know, Peterbilt hoods are as heavy as Kenworth hoods, but sorry to disappoint you, these things are still light as a feather. I don't have to put a 40 pound backpack on to pull the hood over or grab it by the fender, so. Les did full disc brakes with air ride front suspension, so it's a 13.2 suspension. We went with a five and a quarter Cummins. I'll show you the side profile of the uh, of the longer trucks here in just a minute. Okay, he went with the Peterbilt oval rims with 22 low pros. I will tell you on the 389s, one of the things that used to annoy me really a lot was I had to adjust the hoods and they would never just fall down into place like this one. I'm really excited that Peterbilt actually made some corrections here so that the hoods fall down into place properly so four batteries in here there's a blank space in here where you can actually take and and put like uh, some box def in there okay full working dual exhaust full working dual exhaust now i couldn't do this on a 389 short hood i can't and oh real quick too i want to talk i tried now that they're doing it this I was trying to get 567s with full working exhaust and engineering told me no. And the reason that they told me no is, is because the cab of the 567 sits higher and the trajectory and everything is all wrong. So they would not approve me to have full working dual exhaust on a 567. And I know a lot of guys haven't purchased 567s for that very reason, okay? Um, so to answer that question, here's something that's kind of neat that I noticed. 
since they put the handles on here, if you want to clean up the back of your cab, you can unbolt these handles and take them off. Um, the neat thing about that, since he does have his handles here, taking these off would help. Um, you can see they kind of obstruct the mirror just a little bit, but per OSHA regulations, they got to put them on there. So Les went with the three window, back a back a cab three window, and then he did the outboard incandescent lights up top. And then the LEDs down below. I think this is like a 205 or 203 wheelbase. Again, just we had to have it turn really short, really tight. So I haven't had this thing washed up or anything yet, so it's a little bit dirty. <clears throat> Talk about fifth wheels real fast. Center is always right between here. So if I say that, that the setting is a zero, that means that's as far back as the fifth wheel can go. I think we set Les's back at like a minus 14 or 18. So you can see where the center pin, or the king pin is, it's roughly that far back. Dual lockers, again disc brakes, Michelin XD and 2s, flow below hangers with the chrome. I actually really like these. Um, I'd like to hear some comments if you guys like those type of hanger brackets. I think they're kind of slick looking. I might start ordering some stock trucks with them in unless you think it's a bad idea. So I am going to start ordering some trucks in hopefully here in the next uh, short bit to be able to do in-dump applications. I think this short hood is going to be great for in-dump applications. So, so while I'm over here I'll just get a real quick side profile of the day cab. It's got the low air suspension and then we did the it still has the protective stuff on here but um, we do have the these are the Peterbilt drop panels there is no there is no uh, pre-wire for them I want to talk to you about wiring I can now get pre-wire for the air breathers like on the 389s and we can do the pre-wire now here's the issue if the truck is over 30 feet long front to back if it's over 30 feet long, I am not able to do the auxiliary light switch for the breathers. The reason why is, is because that, uh, that annoying light that we remembered that was under the sleeper on the 389s, that shares the same circuit. And so you'll either have to tap into that circuit or they'll have to run like another set of wires um, to do that. So it's not the greatest of news, but there's still a workaround and, and uh, there's already some creative people that I've been seeing on the 589 enthusiast page that's working around that so this truck weighs in at 16 968 16 968 I, I don't know if you can see that it's so hard to see right now but <clears throat> on the dual exhaust I got to show you guys how the plumbing works on the dual exhaust and then when you come up, it's seven inches up on your elbows. And then there's a reducer. I've actually heard or seen that there's a way to actually shift this down. So like you loosen stuff up and then you shift it down. I think Danny did that on one of his trucks on his 389. I don't, if it's possible on this one, that'd be pretty cool. And cover up this kind of unsightly thing here. And then on the back side, you can see here, this is where your flex pipe is. So you're not going to hear that annoying uh, squeaking sound from everything. So these are all hard mount exhaust now. So that it could be good or could be bad. I'm curious on what feedback there's going to be on that. So LX Peterbilt driver's seat, two-tone. So when you order non-black, this is what you get. When you get the saddle interior or the, I can't remember what the name of the, nomenclature is for the interior so his truck is dawn of a legend it's number 156 so 156 of 589 
This one does have tire pressure monitoring system on there. It also has the, the system that you need to start it. So when I try to turn the key, it's gonna get, ask me for a code. It's doing its self checks now. While it's doing that, I'll go on six gauges. So let me talk about this code. Whenever you turn the code on, we have to program it with a laptop. It's pretty annoying. You can turn it off and on. So, but before you take possession of your truck, if you do have that security system, it's actually offered free. But if you want that security system on there, you have to have a set it at the, at the dealership before you take it with you, okay? So, so since Les is hauling MRI machines, I want to show you guys real quick this button right here. So this button is an overinflation valve. This is something that you can get from the factory. It's about a six, eight hundred dollar option, so that you can actually overinflate your uh, bags. Um, one of the catches on that is you do have to, you will sacrifice this right here. You lose four switches just for that little light. Um, it doesn't look bad. But if you need extra switches, you can actually do this aftermarket with us. And uh, we can just do an overinflation valve and just tie it in um, so that you don't lose all those switches if, if that's what you choose. So um, I can't remember what gear ratio Les picked. He might have to put in the comments because I don't have the specs with me. But it is an 18 speed manual transmission. So there's the you down the hood guys I really appreciate you all watching <clears throat> I hope you all know that you mean the world to me and um, you know I, I do pray over every truck I sell because I do want you guys to be successful with your businesses on behalf of your families and I just want to let you know I really appreciate you all working out there the way you do and um, if you guys need me to build a truck for you I'd be honored I hope you all stay safe out there talk soon everybody